hope is the hope is that we're always progressing in that direction and like you know i i think like i think shows like call her daddy do help you know i think it's like i you know it's i i think any anything anything to do with sexuality that's like moving it in a direction that's like normalizing it i think yeah. is good like no matter yeah. what you know what i mean like, that's why i think you're so important i think you are the most important <laughs> porn, porn star to ever live no stop. i do i swear <laughs> to god i do because for for like two major reasons number one luckily so you don't come from like a passive trauma or the cliche mm -hmm. of like i was abused and daddy issues and all that shit, and that's big Cause it's just like, I just like to fuck <laughs> and I get the, I get paid for it. And like, people are like, Whoa. <laughs> and number two, you're very smart. You're very like articulate and you can like, I don't think I've ever had as much chemistry with maybe anybody that I did with you on, on the mic where it's like, you know, I still find myself to this day. We'll talk about it in a little bit. I'm, I pop on a documentary and one of the first thoughts going through my head is like, I got to find <laughs> out what Asa says about this, you know, and like, you know, to be honest, I'm sure there's more porn stars like you out there, but the, the general, cliche and, and the stereotype is not that you know it's not that you want to hear their thoughts on society and philosophy and conspiracies but so when you were able to kind of show that and it's like yeah so i'm not like a, a freak i'm not like some you know crazy person with issues and i am just like normal and can talk and i'm interesting and intriguing it's just like yeah she but she also has sex for money it's not you know it's not that crazy yeah, you know, and like with social media and stuff like that, I, I think we're seeing so many more porn stars like that. I think, you know, before, like in the days before that, like the internet, I, I think, you know, porn stars were these like, it's a again, like on one hand, these like untouchable beings, but on the other hand, these like social pariahs, right? Yeah. Like it's, yep. they, they were just like not normal people. Like you were, if you're in porn, you're a fucked up person, but also like, completely like untouchable and idolized yeah so it's like that weird combination but now it's very much like oh my god like I know a girl who has an OnlyFans account and it's it's becoming more and more normalized which I think is great I think it's like so 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 cool and that is one thing like selfishly that the pandemic has really helped us in is mm -hmm. so many people are you know and and I have to admit, like, I, I think in some instances, it's very unfortunate, but a lot of people are turning to sex work. So it's like, kind of put the world in this place where we're forced to look at it a little bit differently now. Well, you also everyone know someone with an OnlyFans account now. You're also the most important person to ever live as far as OnlyFans goes. <laughs> you just, no, but you, you really are. You were, you were the first. I, I think I, I, I don't know. Maybe you can, maybe you can confirm or deny this if you hadn't done what you did with only fans do you think it would be as sexualized as a platform because at the end of the day only fans is just a, a paywall for content like patreon is a paywall and people use it for podcasts and only fans it's mostly used for sex but i think that's because you got a hold of it and did it. i mean I think it's really, really funny. So like to give a little backstory, OnlyFans originally is a platform that was built for like people like trainers, like physical trainers and makeup artists and like tennis coaches and stuff. Right. Like basically like YouTube personalities with something to teach where they could make basically like a Patreon where people subscribe to them and they could give like this, you know, almost like masterclass and Patreon combined. Right. Got it. That was their intention. When I joined, and there, then were very, <laughs> there, there, there were very few, I wasn't the first one, but there were very, very, very few porn stars on it. I want to say like a handful of us. And quickly I became the number one person on OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. And that all happened while I was at Barstool. So I think it's so funny to me that like OnlyFans is this huge thing now that's like synonymous with porn, but you guys all had a very, very... Like, I, I remember starting an OnlyFans Early. account while I was at Barstool, and you guys were, like, all making fun of me because I was yeah. like, swipe up to my OnlyFans. Yes, yes. Like it was crazy. I mean, I remember thinking, because there was also, I had a vibe when I when I brought you to Barstool. Like, it, I was kind of the, the I brought you there, if you will. And, like, so I always feel responsible for those people. And I'm like, I want to make sure they're set and they're good. And then when there was problems with advertisers or fans, I was always, like, nervous about it. And then I remember one day you were like, 
yeah, I've got like 5,000 subscribers on OnlyFans at like 10 bucks a pop. And I was like doing the math. I'm like, oh, okay, she's good. She's fucking good. I don't need to worry about Asa anymore. <laughs> but I you mean, were the first big one. And like, so maybe you weren't the very first, but you were the first big one that probably like pushed it, you know, in that direction, no? I think it was me and one other like gay porn star um, oh. that like we were like the first people to really make a lot of money on OnlyFans as far as sex work goes. And I remember, like, I was so early on that train that the credit card processors that were, um, that they were using were like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, we didn't sign up to, like, be, like, a porn company's credit card processor. And they have to pull everything. At one point, I lost all of my subscription subscribers. Uh, like, wow. it, it's, it's always a fucking process with, well, like, the... So credit card people and the money people nobody wants to be a part of porn so that's totally new to me i and that's kind of what's going on right now with pornhub specifically is that there's like a credit card issue and to me i was talking to aria about it and 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 i don't think i realized like the the gravity of the situation i thought it was like sponsors are pulling out and there's some protesters like what else like you'll just keep it moving I feel like it's fucking unconstitutional to tell me what I can and cannot buy with my credit card. Fuck that. Totally. I, I think it is unconstitutional, especially because like sex work is legal. You yeah, know what I mean? You're like doing anything illegal. Now, now if, yeah. if, if you could prove that it was all problematic videos with horrible, like that I get, but it's, that's not what I'm buying. It's not what I want. You can't tell me what to fucking buy when it's something that's totally legal. It's also the thing is like, like, first of all, like platforms like Facebook and, you know, like YouTube and Twitter actually have like way more of that illegal shit way on worse. it. We There's just don't talk about it. groups and Nazis and shit all over. Yeah. Social media. And, and like Pornhub actually has like human moderators looking at every single video before it gets uploaded. And like, I mean, I, I fucking hate to say this, but like, I'm sure with human moderators comes human error i'm sure you know yeah. what i mean and like but it's like what are you supposed to do not moderate it like